The African Development Bank says the outbreak of the coronavirus in Africa could cost Nigeria, Togo and other countries on the continent $236.7 billion in the accumulative gross domestic product. It estimated the real GDP of Africa to contract by 1.7% this year. This represents a 5.6 percentage points drop from the January 2020 pre-COVID-19 projections. The AFDB explained that a prolonged situation into the second half of this year caused by the pandemic will result in deeper GDP contraction of about 3.4%, down by 7.3 percentage points from the growth projected before the outbreak of COVID-19. Now it adds that the cumulative GDP loss for the continent could range between $173.1 billion and $236.7 billion in 2020 to 2021. Well, experts in the field of marketing and public relations have agreed that the following, uh, following the COVID-19 pandemic, the marketing profession needs a paradigm shift. This was the unanimous uh, agreement reached at a two-day conference to flag off the Young Marketing Professional Network with the theme, Marketing Beyond COVID-19. In his presentation, Grant Lee, the keynote uh, address sp uh, speaker, says, traditional advertising will change uh, to a predominantly virtual world of sales and product delivery. For former president and chairman of council of the Nigerian Institute of Public Relations, Rutimi Oladili, he says more than ever, a social media platform has become an provided alternative approach to sustainable relationship and mutually beneficial uh, exchange, stressing that virtuality has taken, uh, overtaken the conventional spaces for businesses. The convener, Ayuadi Adiyami, says stakeholders' engagement must now focus more deliberately on marketing specification, sales, public relations, uh, customer service, marketing research, experiential marketing, branding, and general marketing. To our focus of the day, the COVID-19 pandemic has disrupted the business world and companies have no choice but to review their strategies to overcome the crisis. The global COVID-19 lockdown has unprecedented impact on both personal and professional lives. The chaotic situation is forcing companies across the globe to rethink their business strategies. Now, most business leaders have decided to launch digital transformation initiatives to keep businesses running as smoothly as possible during the COVID-19 pandemic and to better prepare for the recovery phase. However, driving change during these chaotic and unprecedented times is challenging for both business leaders and employees. To this end, MBA section on law, uh, business law is adopting a digital means to practice uh, the business of law and offering quality services to clients who are key players in all spheres of business within and outside the country. The business law section of the Nigerian Bar Association will hold a virtual meeting uh, with the theme, Business, uh, Unusual Digital Acceleration for Growth in a New World. While the discussion will focus on issues such as charting a path for an alliance between public and private sector in order to strike the correct balance between the regulatory function of government and collaborative initiatives with the business community. Business continuity in times of crisis, digital workforce and accelerating remote productivity are also key to economic growth and development. I have now joining me via Skype uh, from Lagos Island, a partner with Udo Udoma and Belo Sage uh, Uzufo Ogemudia. Thank you very much for joining us on the show. Thank you for having me. Uh, first, before, let's start with what you think has actually been the effect uh, of COVID-19 on the entire business space. I know it's really, really large, it's broad, but in your thoughts, what do you think are these effects? Mm -hmm. And thank you. I, I think uh, the analysis of the impact of COVID starts with the fact that it affects human communication. The fact that we can't see each other, we can't even within biological families. You can't you can't see every member of your family. You can't when you see you can't touch. You can't shake hands. Things that were part of daily life. And then this translates to business because with people being uh, locked down and at home there is a decrease in the demand for goods and services. So businesses are struggling. 
Um, but in the midst of the struggle, I remember watching some weeks ago when Nike talk, talked about how their sales were up um, despite the pandemic and, and we're continuing to um, experience a boost in sales online. And that just shows that the companies that will weather this storm and come out on the other side of the pandemic successfully are those that are able to, to uh, adapt and leverage on digital technology so that they re maintain a presence online and are able to um, still supply goods and services virtually. And, and in the legal uh, industry, this is also true for us. Um, lawyer, the, the law is a tra traditional profession, and lawyers have offices, clients tend to come to our offices, but we've been working remotely, my firm, we've been working remotely since the lockdown. And so what we've had to do is migrate our data to the cloud and equip our people so that wherever we are, we're able to maintain the level of effect effectiveness and responsiveness to clients and deliver our services as though we were working in the office. So I think that that is what businesses need to do. They need to be creative and find a way to, to stay in touch with their client base and deliver their goods and services as though um, it was uh, the former normal. I think we have a new normal, but that normal is here to stay even after the pandemic. And so we need to take measures that will get us through the pandemic and that we will continue to implement even after the pandemic is over. It, it sounds interesting uh, as a business lawyer that you now have to do your business with the new normal. Uh, tell us more about how this has been challenging or very easy to just get along uh, with life with COVID-19. I think, I think the pandemic has affected everyone in different ways to varying extents. So some are more affected than others. I, um, I think also within the legal uh, community and the, and the commercial law practice, um, some, maybe some firms were more, more better prepared than others before the pandemic. Um, certainly, we had already begun to embrace technology in relation to how we stored our documents, how we, were, how we had access to documents um, remotely. Those were things we had begun to do before the pandemic, um, how we bill and track uh, our receivables, all those things are already digital. I think that um, those are the things we should build up, build upon, um, look into new ways of doing these things. I think with that, working remotely has its challenges, but for the most part, it, it, it works if you have the technology and you're, you're open-minded. So for instance, this interview, I think if it wasn't for the pandemic, I might be in yours too. But um, investing in you know, the hardware, the computer, and then the, the Wi-Fi and whatever you need to stay connected is what's really important. And also for us at the, in the MBA SPL, we always hold an annual business law conference. And this year's conference is the 14th annual business law conference. The, all the 13 before this year have been physical conferences, usually in Lagos or Abuja or somewhere else. But um, this year we were planning a conference in Lagos when the pandemic hit. And our choices were to cancel our conference and just wait and hope that next year we can have hold it or to embrace this change and take on the challenge of hosting thousands of delegates on an all online platform. So we instead of, um, you know, postponing till next year, we decided that we were going to face this challenge and overcome it. We found the right platform and we've been putting things together. We've educated ourselves on the use of this platform because we are all lawyers. We don't have any special technical training in the FBL, but we've, we've, we've embraced the technology, we've educated our speakers, and we're ready to host our conference next week with just uh, about two months of planning to hold a digital conference, which will be the first for the MBA SBL. So we're very excited about that. Indeed, that sounds very good. Uh, our public and private sector partnership has always been a topical issue. Everybody talks about that, and that's the way to go and even to run an economy. Now, how will your forthcoming conference strike this balance? Because I hear that's part of what you'll be talking about between the regulatory functions of government and uh, collaborative initiatives with the business community. I mean, so what, we, what we've seen over the years is that um, the development that Nigeria needs and deserves cannot come exclusively from the public sector or the private sector. We need each other. 
the public sector has the um, force of the law to make things happen. And the private sector has capital, has human capital, it has um, financial capital, and the drive to bring about change. So we, we think that the, the change and improvement we, we require um, will come when we work collaboratively and where we see each other as partners in moving the country forward, especially now with the pandemic. It, it had a global effect, but certain countries will come out of this stronger than the others. And those that come out stronger are those that can work collaboratively across public and private sectors for a common goal. And we see no reason why Nigeria can be one of those countries. So um, as has always been the tradition with the SBL, we, in choosing our panel topics and our speakers, we always reach out to um, both um, members of the public sector and the private sector. So we're hearing from both sides. And so this year, we're honored to have as our keynote speaker, um, Senator William Cohen, who is a former US Senator and also a lawyer by profession and um, working with General Electric, which is one of the leading global players in technology. And so we, we, he's going to be bringing perspectives from his time in public service and also in the private sector. Um, we also have, um, we will also have the minister, the honorable minister for mines and steel development, the immediate past minister for industry, trade and investment, the Registrar General of the CAC talking about one of the initiatives which SBL drove in collaboration with the Enabling, Enabling Business Environment Secretariat and the National Assembly, which is the Companies and Allied Matters Bill, um, which is a bill that the SBL has championed and worked on with the National Assembly and which we continue to support um, and look forward to it becoming law. And as you might know, the SBL has been um, front and center of uh, supporting the government in relation to the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Um, uh, the chair of the SBL is on the presidential um, committee for that. And that's also one of the things we'll be looking at at the conference, how the pandemic will affect the um, implementation of this agreement and intercontinental trade across Africa. Continental trade, a lot of agreements, and I'm looking at the effects of this pandemic on all of this. Now, let's look at the business community again. I still tend to be a little bit worried talking about building this digital workforce that will drive productivity and economic growth at this time. Do you see Nigeria, the Nigerian business community, are they really ready? As you said, business lawyers are embracing technology. Are they also ready? Do you see them ready to keel into this? Because that's the only way to go at this time. I think that, um, you know, the adage that adapt or die, I think that that is where we are right now. I don't know that anybody has a choice. We, nobody saw this pandemic coming. But like I said earlier, the um, businesses, um, within the legal sector and outside of the legal sector. The businesses that will come out successfully from this pandemic are those that are willing to adapt. So I don't think we have a choice. And I don't know that we can say because we're in Nigeria or we don't have um, access to technology. I think we need to do our best with what we have. And like I said, it's a journey. So we have, so, so our law firm, Udo and Bello Sage, we started to build up on um, digitizing our processes and we know a lot of other firms that have done that and the pandemic um, made us invest even more in this but what we've done is equip our um, staff with the knowledge and the and what they need to work remotely i don't think that at the end of this pandemic um, for instance the sbl conference which has always been physical i don't i, I see a digital angle to this conference going forward so it might be go back to being physical or we might all retain um, an option for people to dial in remotely which will save the the requirement to travel and the inconvenience of that or the inability to secure the right um, uh, resources you want at, for your events because people can't um, be physically present in one location i think it's the same thing for businesses uh during this pandemic came as a mother and as a wife and a homemaker. I, you know, I've replaced going to the market with um, ordering my commodities online. There are just Indeed. so many businesses.
people that are willing to go shopping for you, people that are willing to do all sorts of things that we run up and down the place doing. That's the kind of innovation that is very true to the spirit of Nigeria. We have a way that we can find opportunities and we can hustle. So I think that um, the fact that we're in Nigeria doesn't mean we can't adapt. I think we can adapt. We have a lot of Nigerian um, entrepreneurs fintech entrepreneurs and other aspects of technology. So for instance, in the conference, we have a, we'll have a session on e-medicine and it's about delivering healthcare electronically. In the course of this pandemic, we there was a time we needed to um, consult with a doctor and when we called our hospital, they just put us in contact with the doctor online and we had the cons con sure. consultation online. That wouldn't have happened before. They would have just said, come in. So I think we need to look at ways in which we can adapt and traditional ways we've done things which may not be the most efficient way. I think if we continue to look for opportunities for change, we will be able to ride this storm and succeed after and hopefully move our country further along. Indeed. I hope to also join you uh, next week and listen and get some uh, submission at that conference. Thank you very much. Partner with Udo Udoma and Belo Osage Ozofo Ogemudia. Thank you for joining us Thank on Business you. Nigeria today.